So if you are sick in your body, God wants you well, but stop thinking in your mind, but but I, I'm not qualified, you know, I, I'm not holy enough to receive. I, I, I have, I've done so much wrong. If you knew, you, you knew what I've done, you know, uh, I, I would not, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed. I don't think I'm ready to receive. You got to put all those thoughts away because God wants you well and God wants you to receive His grace, even it's a grace of healing, and that grace will transform you. Let's get started with the big picture, God's heart for healing for His people. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, I, I just want to say that uh, first and foremost, we have to see God's heart for His people. And uh, to see God's heart and not just His, His acts, His actions. You know, the Bible says, uh, God made known His ways to Moses, His acts to the children of Israel. So the children of Israel saw God's actions, but Moses saw his heart. Moses saw his ways. So it is the ways behind the acts. So when we look at Jesus and uh, him going, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, he went about doing good healing. Primarily that doing good is healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Through the action, we see his heart, which is deeper. His heart is that he wants you well. You know, there's never an instance in the Bible where a sick person came to Jesus and Jesus said, it is not time for you to be healed or it's not the Father's will for you to be healed. Never once did he deny anyone their healing. Everyone that came, and I didn't say that Jesus went around healing people that didn't want to be healed, but all that came to him, as many as touched him or the hem of his garment, they were healed. So if you are willing to be healed, you want to be healed, Jesus asked the question at one time, are you willing to be made whole of the impotent man at the pool of Bethesda? I mean, what a, what a, an uncanny question to ask a person who is sick for so many years, 38 years. Do you want to be made well? And yet that's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Do we really want to be made well? Because there are some advantages, some benefits to being sick, you know? Depending on which country you're from, you can get some handouts, you can get some, some benefits, you can get some sympathy from people that otherwise you can't get, or you have to go back to work. You know, and uh, some people, they, they want to be healed with their head, but in their hearts, there, there is this uh, uh, dichotomy in terms of wanting to be healed and yet want to be sick. So you must be willing 100% to be healed. All right, that's the first thing the Lord wants to establish. But his heart is sin. Uh, in, in the fact that Jesus says, he that has sinned me has sinned the Father. You never see him denying anyone their healing. Hmm. I love that. You know, Joseph, I've read the healing scriptures many, many times through. I sit down on my couch and I read out loud to myself because I love how you even started out the book with Proverbs 20 through 22. That's for us today. So what's the significance of the healing scriptures for us here and now today? Well, the Bible says that God made man from the dust of the ground. That's his body. And then God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So life came from God's breath. You see, the healing scriptures, they are not just any ordinary words that you would read from a novel or from any other book. The scriptures are God breathed. The Bible says all scripture is inspired of God. That word that inspired is God breathed. Literally every scripture is God breathed. That's the breath that we live by. That's what gave man life in the first place. So disease is nothing more than a lack of life or life has dissipated and a, a certain form of death has come in. We think of death as the ultimate when your heart stops beating, but death sets in. That's the Bible says when you sin, there comes into your body a form of death. It can be a decay, a destruction of a certain organ or whatever, then we call it disease. But uh, when we go to the scriptures, the scriptures are full of his breath, the very breath that gave us life. So as you meditate upon the words and you, meditating is like breaking the kernel of the seed and the seed germinates into life. So they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Well, that, that's the word, the healing scriptures themselves. You cannot find this in any other book. He sent his word. Notice that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions, the psalmist says. But he sent his word first. So we need to be in a place where we are receiving the word 
And uh, the word itself has the power to reproduce itself. So when you're reading healing scriptures, and because they are all about healing and health and wholeness, it has the power to reproduce itself in your life, in your body. So they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Even if you do not know how the process works, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to be intelligent or erudite to put seed to the ground or to be a farmer and to have a harvest. We just have to put the seed there. So just opening yourself to the scriptures and reading the scriptures, we do not know how it happens, but it becomes life to us and healing to all our flesh. And that word healing there in the Hebrew is marpe, which is literally medicine. Medicine to all our flesh. And all includes all. You know, you have medic medication today that, uh, um, you know, we thank God for the medication and thank God for doctors. But sometimes we have a situation whereby, you know, some many of these medicine produce another problem in your body. Okay? And, uh, 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 and the only medicine in the whole universe that we have today at our disposal is God's Word that has no side effects. They will not affect any other organ. Amen. They are health to all, all, in the Hebrew call, all our flesh. Praise God. Verse 18, Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, there you have it. They hear it, but they don't understand it. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. So people, they hear God's word and they have no heart to un want to understand or even ask God for wisdom or, or seek the Lord to have that word revealed to them. God says these are the ones that be they become prey to the enemy's theft, right? The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. Now, if the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, the, notice the, the sequence there. He comes to steal first. What does he steal? Then he kills and then he destroys. He steals the Word of God. Based on this, he steals the Word. Why do you think the thief comes to steal, of all the things he wants to steal, he steals the Word of God. You thought he might want to steal your health, you know, steal your relationships with your, 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 your wife or your husband or your, your children. He comes to, no, no, no. He knows when he steals God's Word from you, he steals all these things because these things are a, a consequence, a harvest of receiving God's Word in your life. So he knows when you take God's Word out of your heart, you have nothing to reproduce in your life because the power is in the seed. And the seed here is the Word of God. Hallelujah. So the devil comes to steal the Word. He's so afraid that you will receive God's Word. He is so afraid. That's why his priority number one is to come and take the Word away from your heart. But thanks be to God, we read in this verse that for those who understand, the devil cannot do that. It's only those who do not understand. Then comes the wicked one and snatches away the Word that's in his heart. So let's seek to understand God's Word, amen? Joseph, uh, take us to the time uh, a while back when you started putting this entire resource together, these healing scriptures. Again, like Lori said a little while ago, she's read it out loud to me. She's probably read this book through three or four times. And it's such an encouragement where did it come from? I mean, what was going on with you, your heart, in regard to putting this entire resource together? Well, down through the years, I have been very uh, uh, interested, intrigued by this subject of healing and health. So that has been my, my interest down through the years. And I, I see that uh, um, the greatest blessing that anyone can have uh, up besides salvation forgiveness of sins is to receive the healing and the health of the Lord. Because unless you are healthy, you're going to enjoy your family life. You're going to enjoy your spouse. You're going to enjoy your children. You're going to enjoy the life that God has given you. So I, I see that a lot of people are being cut you know, short uh, in their life and uh, dying before their time. And, and I, I, 
I was reading the scriptures one day, and uh, this was many years ago when I read that uh, the rapture, before it happens, the Bible says, we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have, uh, who have passed on. They'll go up first. But notice the phrase, we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. And Paul repeated that twice. So I was reading that one day and I said, uh, I was studying on the rapture, on, on, the, on the coming of the Lord. But I was fascinated by the fact that Paul used that word twice. We who are alive and remain. So it's one thing to be alive when Jesus comes again because you are young. You are 10 years old. You are 12 years old. You are 20 years old. But alive and remain. Now remain denotes power. The power to remain alive unto the coming of the Lord. And he used that phrase twice. We who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. We who are alive and remain. So to remain alive denotes that there's something that God is going to reveal to the body of Christ just prior to the coming of Jesus that will cause the church to walk in longevity, to walk in uh, divine health and strength. So I, I, I believe that God has been unveiling more and more of this. And this has been a journey for me. And I, I realize that a lot of people have uh, erroneous ideas in their hearts and minds about healing. You know, depending on uh, what you have heard, because uh, just like faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, fear comes by hearing the words of the world, the words of the devil, the words of the enemy. And uh, we, we know that uh, if we can just isolate God's word into one, one power pack, package, you know, where we, the people just read God's heart for them and they see what Jesus has done at the cross and they see in scripture form, Words that are God breathed, God's heart for them. I feel that faith will arise in their hearts. And that's why I, I have put this together, all these uh, scriptures. And also it covers all the angles that, that questions may arise pertaining to health and healing. For example, is it God's will to heal everybody? So as they are reading the healing scriptures, we have done it in such a way that all these questions can be answered. They will see in the scriptures where that phrase, and Jesus healed them all. As many as touched him were made whole. What that does for you is that you will say that if back then, right, as many as came, God healed, he healed all. All means me as well. So that, that releases your faith and, and, and uh, it, it demolishes the idea that wherever you receive the idea from, whether some some uh, church traditional idea or someone teaching you that healing is not for today, just reading the healing scriptures will settle all that for you and you are now in a posture to receive your healing. So that that's the reason why uh, I wrote this book. You know, we hear so much about meditation, meditating on the Word of God and how it can transform our minds and our hearts. Tell us about about the power of meditating on God's Word? Well, you know, if there's one thing, um, I've, I've shared this, uh, you know, here in my church uh, more than once, that uh, if you, there's one secret of a successful life, just we boil it to one. I know that we are making things very simple and, uh, you know, I, I, I know that uh, some people might just say that it's too simplistic, right? But if there's one thing that the Bible says we can do, they will produce success that will cause us to be prosperous. It is meditate. And I'll, I'll show scripture for that. All right, Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The fact that God said this book of the law must be that Joshua was reading that book for God to say this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate now, meditate is the Hebrew word haga, which is to matter, matter under your breath. Haga, meditate. And then the, the result will be, you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. So that's Joshua 1.8. If you look at Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. And in his law, doth he meditate. Again, it's the he same Hebrew word, haga. In his law, doth he matter, day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted, not some wild tree growing by itself. Planted means there's care given to it. Someone planted him. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers 
of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither. Now, Scripture interprets Scripture. Leaf there is a type of your health and your healing. Your, your, your leaf will always be verdant. It will be green. You will be evergreen. You will stay young longer. Amen. Your leaf shall be green. Now, Scripture in uh, Revelation says, and the, the, you know, John saw the, the tree of life, and the leaves are for healing. The leaves are healing. Again, in Ezekiel, he saw the tree of life. Ezekiel saw the tree of life, and the leaves are for medicine. So we see that his leaf shall not wither means your health will not wither. Even in your old age, you'll be evergreen, perpetually young. Amen. And then the next, the next phrase says, if you meditate on his word day and night, your, your leaf will always be green. And whatever you do shall prosper. Here we have another same word used in Joshua 1, 8. Saleach, prosper. Wow. Saleach. Same word here in Hebrew. So I see that, uh, you know, uh, today uh, people, are, uh, uh, people are so afraid to say health and prosperity, right? But isn't this what these two scripture verses have declared? That if you meditate on God's word, you'll be prosperous. Your leaf will always be green. One of the biggest challenges we have in the medical world today is actually mental health. And you find that people are so focused on the wrong things all day long. They are meditating on the wrong thing. You see, people are meditating all the time, but they are meditating on the wrong thing. They look at the social media, it's full of negativism. They look at uh, the news and you know what the news is telling you, right? You don't get, you don't get things that are life-giving, things that are positive and radiant and robust with health and wholeness. And these things can only be found in the scriptures. So watch what you meditate, what you put your mind on. Take a scripture verse and meditate on it. Memorize that verse. Just take one scripture verse. Take one verse from the healing scriptures and meditate on it and mutter it under your breath. It will cure you of Alzheimer. I'll tell you that. You'll, at least you will keep Alzheimer's and dementia at bay. When you learn to memorize God's word and God's word is life-giving and wherever you memorize it, there it gives you life. Amen. So learn to memorize God's word. And then when you wake up, you memorize it. Okay. And then you meditate on it the whole day. Every, uh, uh, you know, three moments you get, you mutter it. You mutter it. Surely he has borne my sicknesses. Surely. Why did God put surely there? Surely. Surely he has borne. You know, you get excited. You get so excited. And, uh, and uh, wow, God, God had to put the word surely. He didn't even put surely when he says he was wounded for our transgressions. And we are more familiar with that. But he put a surely when it came to Jesus carrying our diseases in Isaiah 53. So you are so excited over just one word because you are meditating on it. I'm just giving you an example of, of, of what happens to me when I meditate on the word of God. It's like I, I, I squeeze the juice out of it. All right, then I'm ready to go for our next scripture verse. Jesus said two things, but Mark's emphasis was on the first, what you hear, and look at Luke's emphasis. Therefore, take heed how you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from him. Now we found the clue to what the, the very thing that we shared just now. What is this having thing? Whoever has, has what? To him more be given. Now we see it. To the one who has this hearing attitude, hearing heart, wanting to hear the revelation of the word, wanting to understand the word. Whoever has this heart, not only he said, take heed what you hear, the subject itself, which is the word of God. Take heed what you hear, but how you hear it. How you hear it. Hallelujah. For whoever has this uh, hearing heart, this hearing attitude towards God's word, the Bible says more, I like the word, say the word more, more will be given to you. And he, Jesus says, take heed what you hear and how you hear with the same measure you use. So if you use a 34 measure, you give 34 attention, 34 uh, uh, focus, 34 uh, devotion to it, it will be measured to you. Guess what? 
to you, you it will be measured what? The same measure you use. Same measure you use, it will be measured to you. 30-fold, you get what? Back 30-fold benefit. 30-fold virtue out of. 30-fold revelation. 30-fold wisdom. 30-fold harvest. Whatever verse it is you're meditating on, it's a verse on healing. You will receive healing, but 30-fold. And it's, it's saying this. It's not because it's God's will. It is saying it's your attitude. The same measure you use. If you listen to God's word of 100%, with the same measure, I, I'm using the measure of 100 percent attention to God's Word. So don't be distracted, friend. If you can, every Sunday, just give that, that time to the Lord. And isn't it amazing how the devil will always try to tell you to catch up on something you have not done during the whole week that you could have caught up on, but you didn't, right? You didn't do all those things. And all of a sudden, while you're listening to God's Word, the devil will say, you know what? You, have, you, didn't, you didn't read this book. You have not read this book. Hey, how about this? You didn't contact your friend. Hey, look at your phone. Right, there's a message that just came in. It's like all hell break loose sometimes, right? When you are about to receive God's Word. That's the warfare, my friend, is actually getting into God's Word. There are so many things trying to hold you back from hearing God's Word because the devil is so afraid. Yes, friend. He is afraid that you will receive God's Word because he knows that his influence and his power in that area of your life will be broken. Why? Because the Word of God is greater than him. Hallelujah. So, if you just tuned in, we are in Jerusalem. Joseph Prince, our guest, talking about healing scriptures is in Singapore. We were so excited about this because Joseph, you've broken down this subject that means a lot to our audience. A lot of our prayer requests, a lot of the comments are about healing for somebody and or a loved one and these grappling with these situations of healing and, and waiting on healing and these trials or tribulations and health mm. that people deal with. And healing scriptures has been put together. Joseph, thank you for putting this resource together. Healing Scriptures is available. Joseph, is super encouraging the way you put it together. You can read it in an hour or so and you end up being encouraged by it. All right. What is this mystery? Because many of the things that we deal with in this life uh, is a mystery to us. We see through a glass darkly as uh, the Apostle Paul told us. So what is this unique situation between, let's say, meditating or murmuring or mm -hmm. muttering, as you've been saying, or thinking about scriptures or thinking about scriptures and saying them out loud? What is that mystery? And break that down for us for a while. I think it's the way that God has um, made us and created us. We are made in His image. And the Bible says that uh, God Himself uh, does that. You know, when God wants to see good, He first speaks it. The Bible says, God saw darkness, but the, God didn't call out the darkness. God said, light be, because God wanted to see light. And it was so. The light was there, and God saw the light was good. So long before God Himself saw good, God, him, God spoke first the good and then he saw the good. So it's the way he is, and we are made in his image. And that's the way Jesus functioned throughout scripture. You will find him speaking. He never healed through thought. He didn't heal in quietness, in silence. He always spoke. Be cleansed, he told the leper. Um, he told the person uh, who was lame, stand upright on your feet. Lazarus, come forth. Jesus used words. But again, it's not something that, uh, you know, oh, I got the formula, I'll just say it out. It's got to be a heart full of Scripture, full of the Word, because Jesus said, uh, it is not exactly speaking that comes first, it's actually the heart. The heart has to be filled with, script, with the Word of God, right? In this case, healing Scriptures, because you, if you are in need of healing, you need to fill your heart with the healing of God, and that comes from the Word of God. So... Out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus said, the mouth speaks. So when you speak out of the abundance of your heart, that's when things happen, all right? There are people who just caught the so-called formula and they try to speak things without having a full heart. And that's what the healing scriptures are for. 
you know, sometimes we just, I'm, I'm just going to say, by his stripes, I'm healed all day long today. And that becomes mechanical. It is, it's anything that you do legalistically will not produce result. So take time to, to sit with the healing scriptures. If you are sick and, uh, you, you, or you are in a season where, you, you know, you, you, are, you are confined to your hospital bed or at home, you know, take time. Instead of just watching television, uh, you know, and, and uh, reading some other books, that, you know, fictional books or books that cannot edify, you know, find time with the healing scriptures. So this book is designed, you know, you can, I mean, it's very portable, it's very simple. Uh, and it's done in such an attractive way for you, right? And just spend time reading the scriptures over and over again. Where's, where a scripture reaches out is like when you read scripture and the scripture speaks to you, stop. Stop reading and meditate on that scripture. God is speaking to you through that scripture. You know, you, you come across scripture when you read your Bible that's almost like, stop, look at me, look at me again. It's like hands that reach out to you and say, pay attention, right? Don't keep on reading. Whenever God, God speaks to you like that from scripture, stop and meditate on that scripture. It is like the Orim and the Tumim, the high priest in, the, in ancient Israel, they'll carry these uh, stones in their breastplate where it will light up. When they ask God a question, it will light up. Well, when you read the healing scriptures or you read your Bible and a verse lights up, stop there and focus on it. God is speaking to you. Now you are from the, from the written word, you are now hearing the speaking word, the Rema. As you meditate on the Rema, your heart is being filled. You see visions on the inside. And then when you speak it out, man, that's when it happens. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. If you confess with Jesus as your Lord, like in the salvation prayer, it's not just a matter of saying in your heart. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be safe. So in the greatest miracle of all that we can receive from God, salvation, it is accomplished by Jesus at the cross, but it's received by us speaking and believing. That's all you need to do. The spirit of faith, I believe and therefore I speak. Amen. Joseph, how does gratefulness connect to overall health and healing? Well, we only have to look at uh, the opposite um, complaining and what that does to the children of Israel in the wilderness. It cut their life short. It cut their life short. And uh, complaining is the opposite of being grateful. And for some reason, I, I see people dropping dead in the, in the Old Testament, in the wilderness, uh, because they complain over every single blessing that God has given. You know, uh, God allowed them to go through something. All right? And uh, knowing that there's a provision there, manna is coming every day, yet they complain the manna is too bland. All right? the, uh, it's manna, manna, manna every day. You know? And uh, they, they murmured at the word of God. They complain at the provisions of God. And as a result, you know, the snakes came in, well, we know that Jesus is like the bronze serpent on the cross and whoever looks on him will be healed. But you think about what brought the snakes in the first place. It was complaining. So likewise, we look at Jesus and there's a beautiful verse of scripture that says that um, the Lord gave thanks for the little that he had in his hands, the, the five loaves and two small fish, right? Before a great multitude, the need was great, but the provision was meager. But even though it was little, he did not complain. He thanked the Father. Now, he's the example son. He's the pattern man that we are to look at. And uh, later on in Scripture, after he fed the 5,000, the Bible says later on in Scripture, it says that the Lord was near the place where he had given thanks. Notice the Holy Spirit uh, of all the, the event that happened, all the supernatural things that happened, the Holy Spirit zeroed in on the fact that the Lord gave thanks. The Lord gave thanks. And uh, that is something that uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, gratefulness, appreciation has been proven even in, in, uh, uh, by neuroscientists, right? Studies have shown that when people are, uh, uh, appreciate, when they thank, uh, they are thankful, they, they are people who are grateful. And it takes an effort because our natural propensity, our natural proclivity is always towards being negative, to complain. So it, it takes some effort. It, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit, actually. Right? So these studies have shown that actually even people with uh, Alzheimer and all that, it has been reversed. They find that when they are thankful, right, they begin to find more reason to be thankful. 
And that's something we need to teach uh, our children, you know, that uh, because uh, they learn, they learn from us <laughs> to be thankful for every little thing, you know. Or else we can have the latest gadgets and the latest uh, smartphone and all that, but you know something? We'll never be grateful. We're always looking for more. We are, we, we are living now in, in a society that, we're, you know, people are just, they have so much more than our grandparents ever had. And yet, they're not satisfied, they're not happy, right? They're sad, and there's more mental problems now. Mental challenges that we have are all over the world. Think about that. It's a lack of being grateful, a lack of praising God and thanking God. You wanna see more? Thank God for what you have. You know, and I love how you talk about the message of grace so beautifully. You've poured into the world um, through your voice. Uh, and, and through your life to teach the world uh, a beautiful message, Joseph. And, and I love the part where grace is actually empowerment to do the word of God, to, to adhere mm -hmm. and, to, and to be able to um, speak life in the, in the face of death and to call forth healing when, when you're in dire circumstances. And so I know that every person on the planet has the opportunity to walk by faith. And it is a choice. It is a, uh, sir, do you want to be healed? It is that choice of saying, yes, I am going to believe this with all of my heart. And I know that, that even when I pick up the healing scriptures, it's mostly in my desperate days yeah. of not feeling well, <laughs> thinking, Oh, okay, this is, a, this is my opportunity to walk by faith. And walking by faith, the Bible says, is the only way to please the Lord. And so he gives us that opportunity. And, you know, I, I love that. But, but he also empowers us to walk by faith. And, and so, so I find myself going to those scriptures, going to my book <laughs> and reading and, and I love how you said um, that when the Lord does speak to you, I find myself, since I'm talking out loud and nobody else normally is in the room, I'm reacting to a scripture like, oh, yes, you know, <laughs> I believe mm -hmm. that with all my heart. And so how do you, um, because I know you also have an opportunity every day, a choice, a, a a circumstance to walk by faith. How do you use those scriptures for yourself and your family? When I have a challenge, you know, one thing about all of us, uh, even for us who teach the word of God, and uh, we, you know, people look at us and they say, well, they know everything about scripture and, you know, they, they, are, they are full of the word. And, but, you know, all of us face challenges the same way. We have to respond the same way. And uh, many a times I find that, uh, you know, that, that, that uh, parable where Jesus talked about the parable of the sower and the seed, he says that Satan comes to steal the word. Uh, that is so true because uh, even the word that you have um, a week ago, you ask yourself, what was that that God showed me? And you, you'll find that you can forget what God showed you. So it's always important to write down. I have a white margin Bible I use, and I, I love that Bible because when I go back to it, I can see what I wrote and what God spoke to me then. And it, it revives me again. But if it's not written down, you can forget because there is an enemy. And this forgetfulness is not because of some mental lapse or because of aging. You know, it is something that the devil comes, Jesus says, to steal the word. Notice he's so afraid that the word will take root in you. That's when, when things happen when it takes root in you. He just wants you to uh, receive it and you get excited about it, you know, superficially in your mind, and then you let it slide. And the next day you move on to something else. But don't do that, you know, uh, just be aware. That's why meditation causes you to hold on to that word. It causes you to focus on the word. And that's why the healing scriptures are, 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 are put together so that you can keep on looking at it because we forget, we forget. And, and, and we forget uh, so many scriptures and sometimes you just to test yourself, what was the scripture I used to know? I used to memorize that scripture. You'll find that you, you forget yeah. parts of it. And that's why the healing scriptures are put together so that you can go through it again and say, oh yeah, I, I used to remember, yeah, God showed me this. You know, you're having a personal revival every time you go through it again. 
You see, you don't talk about, oh yeah, I enjoy that uh, filet mignon, or I enjoy that, that, that good steak last, last weekend. I, 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 now, I'll never eat steak again because I have that memory. No, you, you, you will eat, right? You eat it again and Mind again. yourself. Right? Yeah, and, and savor the moments. But the Word of God is like that. You know, faith doesn't come by having hurt. You need to keep on, keep on uh, being in the Word, and, and what better than putting, putting all the healing scriptures together? Because uh, there are always questions that we have about healing. For example, you know, people will have questions like, you know, I don't think, yeah, I believe God wants to heal people, but uh, if you have sin in your life, I think uh, that, that's a problem. Well, if I go to the scripture, now I'm against, I'm against sin, okay? But if we look at the scriptures in the Gospels, everybody that Jesus touched and healed had sin in their lives. In fact, there was no righteous one except him. The disciples were not born again for that matter. They were followers of Jesus, but they were not born again. How could they be born again if Jesus had not yet died and shed his blood and been resurrected? It's only through his death, burial, and resurrection you can confess Jesus Christ is my Lord and be born again. But when he rose from the dead, he breathed on them. That's when they, was, they were born again. And then in the upper room, Later on, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they were followers. So none of them were, 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 were righteous. None of them were born again. Everyone Jesus healed was sinners. So they had sin in their lives. And, and yet he never categorized them. He never said, all right, you guys in the, among the multitudes, he never categorized them before he healed them. Like for example, he says, all right, those of you who have unforgiveness in your heart, all right, I want you all to sit down here and get things right. Okay, forgive the dude. All right, and uh, you get things right before I pray for you. And all of you, you know, you just had a quarrel with the missus, right? You, you stand over here, I'll pray for you later. You better get right with your spouse before I pray for you. And you guys over here, so everything that, that uh, church tradition have brought in, you know, the idea that before you can receive healing, you've got to clean yourself before you take a bath. All that has got to go. But how can we uh, have God's thoughts and God's, you know, God's thoughts, His goodness always exceeds Ours, you know, his thoughts are way above ours. We can't imagine how good he is. But when you go to the healing scriptures and you see, wow, I'm sure that among these many that touched the hem of his garment, there were some of them that were watching porn. There were some of them that were that were beating up their wives. There were some of them who had grudges. But I believe that the moment they received healing, the grace of God changed them. They became followers of Jesus. So it's the goodness of God that leads them to repentance. Now, in the old, you have to be good before you receive the blessing. That's true because they were under the law. But when Jesus came, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came with Jesus Christ. He gave them the blessing first, and the blessing transformed them. So if you are sick in your body, God wants you well, but stop thinking in your mind, but, but I, I'm not qualified, you know, I, I'm not holy enough to receive. I, I, I've done so much wrong. If you knew, you, you knew what I've done, you know, uh, I would not, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed. I don't think I'm ready to receive. You've got to put all those thoughts away because God wants you well and God wants you to receive His grace, even it's a grace of healing, and that grace will transform you. The goodness of God is what leads us to repentance. Amen. Let the people receive. Don't categorize them. All who are sick are welcome to receive the healing of Jesus. Imagine if we have preached that from the start. We'll see more healing. For example, even in the, in the scriptures, one of the healing scriptures uh, you will find in the, in the book is from James, where it says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Okay? So, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now watch this. What if the guy has sin in his life? Notice, the next verse says, and if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. All in one fell swoop. He didn't say, is any sick among you? Let him search his heart. Search your heart until you feel disqualified. <laughs> Now, by the time they search their heart, they're not in a position to receive anymore. Because I tell you this, if you, the only person who can search your heart is God. And by the way, that scripture verse has been so abused because the Bible doesn't say search your heart. The Bible says, David said to God, search me, O God. Only God can search your heart. If God show you something, you tell him about it. 
Amen. You confess that to Him. Amen. If it bothers you, all right, it's something that is prominent, tell God about it. Get it over and done with. But there's no limit. There's no um, uh, qualif qualifications for you to receive your healing except to receive. To see God's heart, wow. His large, generous heart for you. He gave you His Son. If How shall God not freely give us all things? If God spared not His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely? You don't have to qualify for it. Freely give us all things. Now, if you say that God gave me Jesus, but He will not give me healing, you are saying that God, God prized healing above His Son because He was willing to give you His Son, but He's not willing to give you healing. No, if God gave you His best, He gave you His best, heaven's best, Jesus, His own beloved Son, the Son that He loved. You know, when Jesus came out of the waters of baptism, the Father opened the heavens to him and said, you are my beloved son. In you, I'm well pleased. He gave up that son for you. If God spared not his own son for you, how will he not with him also freely give us all things? This is not religion, folks. This is reality. So many people want to be healed. So many people have so many problems. They, they need something to help them. And God is saying, I gave it to you wow. already. I've done it. So if we want it, how much more does God want it for? Because he's already, how much more does he want us to receive it? Because of what he did, the price he paid for it. That could be the key that someone is thinking that, that healing is subject to some, you know, cleaning up of my act or, or trying to become righteous to, to receive this gift. And maybe this is the moment somebody is contemplating something they've never thought about. Wait a second, it isn't about me. Uh, it's about God's love for me that I need to dwell on. Just pray for people right now in the audience. This is such a big issue. A little bit of a ministry time now, if you would, please, sir. Yep. Even as you were speaking just now, I felt like already there's a, such a flow of the gifts of the Holy Spirit being released exploding right now uh, in the hearers' lives, in the hearers' bodies, the gifts of healings. Notice that that, that that word, gifts of healings, is both plural in the Greek. Gifts of healings, all kinds of healings, all kinds of miracles right now exploding in your bodies, in your minds as you are watching this right now. I see someone, uh, I see God healing all kinds of cancer, prostate cancer. I see a, 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 a liver cancer, someone with quite an advanced case. And I think you're watching this from a hospice or a, in a hospital somewhere. And um, right now, you, you're feeling warmth all over your body. Receive that healing in Jesus' name. I see someone with tumors in their brain and they, they are receiving that healing right now. They are feeling a release. They are feeling a, a, a freedom that they never felt before. And, and a liberation in their minds, clarity in their thinking. And I feel that uh, right now, God is also healing people with uh, uh, stomach ailments, stomach conditions, uh, even irritable bowel syndrome and, and ulcers. Ulcer, right, just right now when someone was saying, I have colitis, will God heal me of that? Right Right now, that healing, that healing is being released in your body right now and you're feeling warmth in your body right now in the name of Jesus. I see God doing all kinds of miracles of healing. You know, friends, if you know that God has done something in your body, even verified by the doctor's report, please write to TBN and let us know what happened in this session because there's so, I see like, you know, like never before uh, in, in a session like this, such healings being released because now you see God's heart. You see, all the while, the enemy has been deceiving you, saying that you don't qualify your, uh, in, for God's healing. You are, you are not worthy enough. You, 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 you need to do this. You need to do that before you can receive. But friend, now you are receiving freely because you know He loves you. Now He, you know, we know, we know that the first healing mentioned in the Bible, and there's always something significant in the law of first mention of any subject in the Bible. And the first time healing is mentioned was Abraham praying for Abimelech and his concubines and his wives and all his servants' wives because Abimelech took Sarah into his harem and God stopped him and God smote them with disease and Abraham actually lied 
in surrendering Sarah, he committed a twofold sin. He wasn't taking care of his wife, and then he lied to Abimelech, saying that my, she's my sister. Notice, God said to Abimelech that night, Get Abraham to pray for you, for he's a prophet. My goodness. The man just lied, and yet God said, Let him pray for you. And Abraham prayed, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, all his concubines, and all his servants and their wives. And friend, the law of first mention tells us that healing is prayed by people that are undeserving for people who are undeserving. It is by grace through faith. You don't have to qualify for it. You just have to receive it. Even the one praying does not need to qualify for that healing. And the one receiving does not, to be, does not have to be extra holy, does not have to be qualified to receive, as we see from this example. So friend, see the love of God and receiving won't be a problem. See the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and you won't have a problem being well. Amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.